In this video, we're going to be talking about Terrace Marshall, wide receiver from LSU, and we're going to be talking about how he should be valued in Dynasty Fantasy Football, where he should be going in rookie drafts, and whether or not we should be looking at him for our fantasy teams. And we're going to be doing that right now. What's going on, guys? This is Bruce Matson, your host of the show, Metric Scout Fantasy Football. And today I got another player for you to get you ready for your rookie drafts. We know we've been doing this series going player by player, but we have to dig in on Terrace Marshall, one of the top wide receivers or one of the good receivers in this batch of good wide receivers in this class. This is a tremendous class of wide receivers. He's just got an interesting player profile. He was playing third fiddle behind Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson the last couple years and we all know they've been studs. Justin Jefferson blowing up in Minnesota for the Vikings and Jamar Chase considered the top wide receiver in this year's class by many and he was kind of on the outside looking in when it came to production. Freshman year age 18 just 192 yards and then sophomore season 671 so stepped it up a little bit 13 touchdowns so that was solid when you look at that from a dominator standpoint still that was only 11.15 percent market share of the passing production that year that was in 2019 this year with the offense to himself with jamar chase opting out justin jefferson in the nfl Terrence Marshall got the chance to play more in the slot, play more Justin Jefferson's kind of role. And he didn't do half bad. He lost some of the season, but still maintained a 23.41% market share. If you have a 20% threshold, which that's kind of what I use, age 20 is his breakout age this year. If you look at it from a historical standpoint among wide receivers from a market share standpoint, he's kind of just under the threshold of productive wide receivers at the NFL level. However, we can make some context around his career at LSU, who he played with, obviously. Injuries, obviously. Only playing seven games this season. So you can put some context around that, wrap it around there, put a little bow on that. The thing about him sharing the field with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson is that usually good Wide receivers at the NFL level are still productive, still have a high ownership or marginally high ownership around the 20% range-ish, even with good competition. There have been a few exceptions, but more often than not, I mean way more often than not, they are still hovering at around 20% or so market share. We didn't get that with Terrace Marshall when he was sharing the field with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. Uh, he kind of could not outshine them or gain shine with them. He did get 13 touchdowns in 2019, which is something to look at. And he was able to get 671 yards, which isn't that great considering how high volume of a passing game that was. This year at age 20 was good, but it wasn't like exciting either when you look at it from a statistical standpoint. He did have 2.91 yards per route run so he was very efficient with how he was playing also he averaged 6.4 yards after the catch per reception and then a lot of his work was out of the slot 47 catches from operating out of the slot and then he's very successful with contested catches catching nine contested catches with a 82 percent contested catch rate and that's mainly if you look at his player profile he's six foot two 200 pounds so he's got length he's got size he's got a good catch radius so he can win on those contested catches due to that the one thing about a size though a knock on that is he is a shade thin not too thin but he's a shade thin but when it comes to his size, what goes along great with that is the size adjusted speed. He can run fast for his size. Elite level, I'm talking probably about 90 percentile size adjusted speed score if we had to combine this year. I'm, I'm betting you, I can't bet you because it can't happen, that if we had the combine this year and they were all running on the same surface, 
that once we put the numbers together and we adjusted everybody for size, Terrace Marshall would experience a large increase in value among Dynasty Fantasy Football aficionados just because of that athleticism what he would have showcased. He's a good player. He's a little stiff in the hips, has a little bit of trouble on some of those breaks, but the size adjusted speed is what makes him a good player. What I like to see from him on tape has good hands, very strong hands, can stretch the field, get behind defenses. That makes him an exciting player. Another thing what I like about him in his profile is you're hearing rumblings and talks from big mock draft media, some former scouts, that there's a good chance or there's some potential that he could be drafted in the first round. If he gets that draft capital, we have to bump him up a little bit. That means he's going to get opportunity early in his career to succeed or opportunity early in his career to fail. If you want to look at it, glass half full, glass half empty, however you want to do it. But he's at least going to get that opportunity instead of us wishing or waiting on him to get the opportunity. He's going to get that instantly if that happens. I think he's easily a day two pick. But if he's a day one guy, then we have to bump him up. I, on my wide receiver ranking video, I had him ranked in my third tier. And that's mainly because of that projective draft capital that he may get. If he does become a first round pick, which a lot of people are predicting him to be, like back half of the first round, then you got to bump him up. He has length, he has size, he has speed. Those are all good things in a wide receiver. He is from a tie-in power five program who produces good wide receivers who at least have lately been producing good wide receivers and teams are just want to dig into that pool and dig from that well to get that talent terrace marshall's part of that i could see them wanting to do that that makes sense that makes sense why people are mock drafting him that high it makes sense why scouts are liking him during this COVID era where it's harder to scout players on a personal level you may be dipping more in these top prestigious power five programs to get these players. Terrace Marshall could be a benefit of that in his draft capital. Could help his own personal paychecks. I like him in those regards. There are some players that had ranked below him that I really like better. That if we were just ranking players one for one in scenarios, no draft capital involved, I would have him higher. I don't think he's a bulletproof prospect at all. He does make me nervous. Like, I wish he could have stood out more with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. I understand how that could be hard, but for me to put a guarantee on him, I, I would need that production. But I can also see the flip side of that, where he could be productive at the NFL. He has length, he has size, he has speed, kind of like DJ Chark, kind of. DJ Chark wasn't a tremendous productive athlete did have more production per se on a market share standpoint LSU wasn't firepower offense like they were 2019 little different slope to grade them on Terrace Marshall could have some of those properties especially in the right situation if he's in a bad situation if he's in a low volume passing offense with a quarterback that can't get him good targets you may want to fade him. And it may not even be a complete fade. You may want to just fade him down a little bit because there's so many good wide receivers in this draft class. You got Dami Brown. You got Elijah Moore, Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore should be obviously ranked ahead of him, but some people, it's different for them. Um, Jalen Waddle. The, the, the ranks just are deep. Seth Williams, Amon Rossi Brown. Just all these players. A lot of good wide receivers. And if you see chinks in armor when it comes to situation, fit and you see another player that is ranked closely or similar tier i say similar because a, a lower tier can get bumped up then you have to make that switch because it's not like these players aren't talented they don't have the market share they don't have the draft capital yeah you just have to be willing to pivot Terrace Marshall is a player i can pivot on he's also a player i can pivot to draft is going to really matter for him because I like what I see of him on the field, but I don't see him as the perfect player. I don't see him as a stud, must-get player, must-get asset. I see him as a guy with some good properties, size, length, speed, 
that could allow him to excel at the NFL level. I question his ownership rates in college. I question his production. I question it a lot. He's a guy that I'm rooting for. He's a guy that I don't agree with his profile, but I agree with what I see on the tape. I am more often drafting him too. That is one of my players in this draft who doesn't have a pristine production profile that I'm leaning to because where he went to school, who he played with, how he's been coached, how he looks on the field, his speed, his size, all of those things. Draft capitals might be there. Looks like it could be. And if it is, then that gives me another nod towards him. But I'm also being objective. And this is being me being objective, talking in circles about Terrence Marshall. He is, he's a tough guy to peg right now. Tough cookie to crack, per se. But Terrence Marshall, I can't say he's a bad player. I just got some red flags, got some issues with him. But I'm still looking to pull the trigger on him come draft day. It just depends on we're at in the draft. I want to thank you for watching the show. Um, on the way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Toss me a like. Share this with your homies. And I'll catch you next time.